I want to thank God for this evening, for his goodness and for his grace. I want to thank him for the far he has brought us as his children. Thank you very much, um, Lunji and the Ebo Best guitarist for that song, that we are not forgotten. May God bless you and the entire team that has made sure that we have the service tonight. One of the greatest challenges to speak to people is that you can speak, and it's a difficult one to speak, but it's even harder to practice what you preach, isn't it? But by the grace of God, we must speak and we must act because we are reminded that Moses was a man who was mighty in word and in what? And in deed. So we pray that after him, we may walk in his steps, that the messages that we share from this place and the messages that you hear and you share from where you are, that they may be living summons. Now this is a week of love. Uh, and in many churches, and just like this one, we've been emphasizing that we are on family, we are on marriage, we are talking about love. And I decided to also bias this message by the grace of God. It was difficult uh, to come up with it, but I want to thank God for enabling me to pen down a few words. And if you want to think of a title then tonight, I thought about two of them. One is the endless love story. The endless love story. And I also consulted the book of Luke, where I found a title, He Whom You Love Is Sick. Now, I must make a confession that I confused my phone while I was communicating with uh, Pastor Felix here, in that the key text which was read, I think I'll use it in my other sermon, and not tonight's sermon. <laughs> the text I sent you is not the one that I'll use, but indeed it's a beautiful text from the book of Luke 11, 1, where the disciples are asking God to teach them how to pray. But for today, let us go to John 11, 1. So you can see where the confusion came from now. Eh? John 11, 1, and we're going to read a few texts from there. But then where we want to focus is verse 3. which is the text. The Bible says, Therefore, the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold him whom you love is sick. Behold him whom you love is sick. Now, I don't know how far you have gone to understand love, but love is undefinable. And yet we have definitions for it. Even the dictionary does. But come with me to the book where I want us to think about the words that are recorded of Jacob. In Genesis 29, 20, there's a story that many people have come across. And if you haven't come across it, then tonight you have a homework. This is Jacob who is in love with Rachel, and something is recorded that baffles my mind up to now. Because the Bible says, so Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Now, I don't know how long you're going to be here for your degree, but can you describe your journey in Baraton to be like one day, you know, study, the four years? Now, for Jacob, seven years of working to get Rachel only seemed like a what? Th that is how complex love is. Well, I thought that maybe Jacob has a problem in, and myself in understanding this concept of love but I also remembered that the wisest man as recorded, Solomon, and yes, the richest, was also disturbed by the concept 
of love. And he recorded in Proverbs 30, 19, he had understood many things. In fact, his works are beyond any comparison. But in Proverbs 30, 18 to 19, he says, there are three things that are too amazing for me. Four, that I do not understand. The way of the eagle in the sky, he mentions that. He further says, the way of a snake on a rock. I want to quickly forget about that because I have no business with snakes. The way of a sheep on high seas. And he concludes by saying, the way of a man with a young woman. So indeed, love is a place where we want to dwell. Even Solomon said this he could not understand, and yet we are called to understand. So let us come back to the story of Lazarus. In the book of John 11 is a story of Lazarus, whom many have known was raised from the dead. And there are things I want us to learn from this story and in this family. It begins, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who, who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold him whom you love is sick. Verse 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Verse 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And the story goes on. It takes almost the entire chapter, if not the whole of it. But something happens remarkable after these verses, and we don't have time to go through them all. But Jesus is informed that Lazarus is sick. And what should have happened immediately, like of any hospital, any good doctor, this is an emergency. You don't want to call on a doctor or to call for an ambulance and you're told that it's not ready. Jesus does what? Delays ambulance services. He delays the much needed health services. But he explains the reason for his delay. In verse 14 and 15, it says, when he was trying to explain why he delays, the Bible says, then Jesus said to them plainly, to the disciples, Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Jesus delays for the sake of who? For the sake of the disciples, and I believe for the sake of you who is seated here tonight. He delayed to go and heal the man whom he loved for the sake of the disciples and for your sake. Well, Jesus sits on the journey and heads to the place he had delayed to go to. He arrives after Lazarus had been dead for four days. Now, four days is a long time for us not to expect anything. And I believe God wanted to create that effect for him to arrive after such a time. Now, let me quickly take you to Martha. Martha hears that Jesus is in the neighborhood, him whom they had informed and they were waiting for. In verse 21 of John 11, it says, well, let me begin from 20. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. They are still grieving. This is still a time of grief. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, 
if you had been here, my father, sorry, my brother would not have died. And these same words are mirrored in verse 32. Here are the words of Mary. When Mary also hastens to Christ in 32, the words say, Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Let's quickly pick a lesson from these two sisters. These two sisters knew what the presence of God could do in the life of their beloved brother. They knew that if Jesus had been present, their brother would not have died. How about you? What do you know about God in your life? Do you believe and trust that if he's available, certain things will not happen in your life? Actually, anything that would harm you. Is that what you believe? That is what they believe. They knew the extent of God's power, at least in their confines. Well, we must quickly move on. We see something else here that is of interest. In verse 22, again, Martha is continuing to say, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Verse 25 are words that we must be able to highlight. Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. These are words that I believe will be expounded on a day when we are talking about the state of the dead. But at least for us tonight, we must appreciate that Christ is saying that them believing in him, they will not die because Christ is the resurrection, yes, and he is life. So let us again recap the life in this family. The family of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. They had Jesus as their friend. And they appreciated the power of God. What is the state of your house? Because where you live is now your house, is now your family. Do you have God as your friend in that house? And it's recorded that Jesus was their friend. Is God your friend? And do you know his power to heal? Children of God, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus had Jesus as their friend. Make Jesus your friend, and continually learn of his power to heal and to deliver. They knew that Jesus had power, even though they were ignorant of its full extent. You see, they knew that after four days, he may not be able to do much, but at least they had an idea about his power. Do you have an idea about the power of God in your life? That even after things have gone so bad, I don't know what you're going through in your life. There are things that we have already written off because of how far they have lasted in our lives. But even after four days, and those four days could be 10, they could be 20, they could be 15, or it could be just one day or one hour. But God is beyond the limits of time, and his power is able to deliver. And his power is able to come through for each and every one of us. But remember something that is critical, that God comes to this family after a delay to demonstrate his glory. God is not coming in our lives, and God is not coming in your life tonight and the week that we are beginning, just for no reason. It's all for his glory. When God appears in this story, we see that he makes a great demonstration of his power and all the Jews, the priests, yes, the chief priests, were able to acknowledge and see that there is something about this man. So this act was supposed to be a spectacle. It was supposed to show who God is and his power. So 
will you give an opportunity to God to demonstrate his power through his delay in your life? Because that delay must be interpreted in quotes. What we call his delay is actually God being right on time and ready to demonstrate his power at the right time. For God's children, all that happens to them, they leave it unto him because he knows best why he allows it to happen. We see that after four days, he shows up and he resurrects this man. And he says it was all for his glory. Can we leave it all unto God, knowing that he's in full knowledge why he would delay, why he delays? Remember the text says here that him whom you love is sick. We would have expected Lazarus not to get sick. But we recognize here and tonight that even those that God loves, they get sick. And they not only get sick, they may die. And in this instance, we see that Lazarus died. But death is not their end. It is not the end of their story. Children of God, which sickness are you going through? It could be a physical sickness in terms of your health. It could be a sickness of any other nature in terms of the things that you think should be happening in your life and they're not happening. Could it be you're going through a very anxious time? Could you be depressed? Or is it that need that you have wanted to see supplied for the last many years, but it's not been supplied? Even in families just like this one, where God was their friend and companion, we see sickness and we also see death. But the good news is God was their friend. The call tonight among many calls is, let God be our friend. Let God be a present and ever-present guest in our homes. So that even when sickness and death comes, we know that deliverance follows right after that. So yes, Lazarus was sick. Lazarus died. But God shows up and raises him. This is what we see God doing for the sick right from the beginning. Because in Eden, after we had eaten the forbidden fruit, we see God coming and calling and saying, where are you? This is his love that has been looking for us from the beginning. And that is the love at play even in this home of Lazarus and the two sisters. On the cross, we see Christ hanging on that tree. For you and me, he went through agony, sorrow, and death for us. God, who appeared in that home, for his friend Lazarus is here tonight. He's reminding us to see him hanging on that tree, on the cross. And he's saying that the story of love that he began with us from the beginning has no end. That even in your sickness, even in my sickness, in all its forms, he wants to rescue you and me. How long is it going to take? I do not know. But I was telling you at the beginning about Jacob. Because of the love he had for Rachel, seven years seemed just like a few days. So for those who love God, no matter how long it will take you to see the answer, your story will be like Jacob's. 
it will be like a few days because of love. Children of God, the love of Christ should be our contemplation. It should be for our meditation. It worked a miracle in the home of Lazarus and the two sisters. And it wants to work a miracle in your life. Behold him hanging on the tree for you and me. In John 15, 13, the Bible records that greater love has no one than this, than to lay one's life for his friends. Christ laid down his life for you and me. So where are you in your life? At what station of life are you? Are you almost giving up? Is it past four days and the report is that place is in a deep stench? Don't even open. Christ is in the neighborhood. And as we begin this week, he's right at the door. Because he wants to perform a miracle, because he's on an endless love story for the sick, for you and me. And when we talk about the sick, don't look for your neighbor. I should not look for where the sick are. Because the sick is the one speaking to you. The sick are the people I'm seeing right in front of me. God wants to perform a miracle of healing. Like we said, how long is it going to take? We do not know. But at the right time, Christ is coming and he's saying, Lazarus, come forth. He's saying, Mary, come forth. He's saying, John, come forth. And this miracle has no bound. It has no limitations. This love is not bound by any chains. It has broken through prison doors. It has gone to the deepest that man cannot reach. It has gone where all the telescopes that the scientists have made cannot view. That is the love of Christ that we are speaking about tonight. You see, we must not tire to read John 3.16. It must get a fresh view. And let me go there and read those verses. John 3.16, and today I'll move on to 17. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not do what? Why should we perish when love has come tonight? but have everlasting life. Lazarus, who was resurrected, is now dead. But we know that he's waiting for everlasting life. So for some of us, we may not be resurrected. But if we are to sleep before he comes, we know that eternal life is awaiting. Verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world, but that through him, sorry, we might be saved. So God has not come to condemn, but to save. He's pleading with his arms open wide. He's saying, get off and let anyone in front of you give space. Give him room to come in. But let us see what 1 John adds to that thought because 1 John 3.16 also has something to add to this. 1 John 3.16 1 John 3.16 we, we are from John 3.16 1 John 3.16 says By this we know love because he laid down his life for us we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Christ has laid down his love for us, and he calls that response to be extended to the others. Children of God, we cannot explain or live up this love minus God. Even as we extend this love to our neighbors, in all forms of relationships, 
we need to be able to look at Christ because we can only know this love by looking at him and let him live in us because when you continue to chapter 4 verse 8 it says he who does not love does not know God because God is love God is love God is love and he is love and without him we cannot love aright I'm reminded of the many times I have wanted to extend love through the beautiful songs that have been sung of this world. I don't know what your favorite song is, but many love songs have been sung. And there are times I've attempted to use those lines to love, but I have terribly failed. Those songs are very nice in our headphones, and when we listen to them from the favorite love stations, when they speak of that never-ending love that we extend unto each other, male and female. But for us to be able to love aright, that love begins from here. All the times I've loved, the way those very nice lyrics put it, have failed. But for us to be able to love aright, is to love the way God loves. Because the best lyrics on love are right in his word. For us to extend that, this love that knows no end, this endless love story, it is right in him who says, he is love. Romans 8, 35, Romans 8, 35 onwards has a beautiful message for us in regard to this never-ending love. Romans 8, 35. Allow me to read these beautiful verses because it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This endless love story comes to us as we end the week behind us and as we begin the new one. This love that descended in the home of Lazarus and the two sisters. That even though you and me are sick, this love will not desert us. And that is why I'm moved that we pray together the prayer of Ephesians 3, 14 to 20. Ephesians 3, 14 to 20. There's a prayer of Paul. This will be our prayer that I hope you will go and take note and revise for yourself. The Bible says, For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge 
that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or imagine, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand for prayer. Father in heaven, your children have stood and we have prayed from the words of Ephesians. May it be so according to your will that this love that has no end will be lived out in our lives now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen.